In this devlog I show how to create a massive cave level using procedural generation, so let's go. Here's long story short why I decided to go on with procedural level generation. After playing Terraria a while back, I really wanted to implement a large level with cave dungeons to be explored. And this is where simplex noise comes into play. As simplex noise is such a powerful tool in procedural generation, I will explain the basics here in a few simple steps. Step number one, we need a random number generator which produces always the same sequence at our will. This is handy feature if say, one randomly generated cave is more interesting than another so that we can at our command later generate always that particular cave. In ghetto, we can do this by the so-called seed parameter. It simply initializes the random number generator with the known state. Step number two. We need to understand the noise period, which is connected to noise frequency. If we would simply take random number generator and plot the outcome scale between black and white colors, we would get something similar displayed here. This noise fluctuates heavily from dark to white tones, which means its period is low or its frequency is high. Now, if we go on and increase the period, the fluctuation drops dramatically and what is left is an image which looks like a random valleys on the map. In Kudo's open simplex noise node, the period can be set using the base period parameter. Step number three. While simple low period noise could be enough to generate random caves, in some cases he would like to increase the randomness a bit. This is where the octaves come into play. The octaves simply mean that instead of one random image, we generate several random images with different noise periods and sum them up together. By giving less weight to the lower period noise images, we can fine tune the heavy fluctuation which might lead to something interesting, like this image resembling a cloud texture. In open simplex noise, we can set the number of octaves by the octaves parameter and adjust the weight of the octaves by the persistence parameter. For example, persistence of 0.5 means that energy of each lower period noise octave will be halved before summing it to the final image. Step number four. To generate random caves, all we need to do is to generate one random 2D array with simplex noise values and map those values into two numbers. Zero, which means that no tile will be placed and one, which means that a tile will be placed. We can do this mapping by comparing each intensity value with the tolerance value, say 0.6, and by repeating this process we get what looks like a blueprint of our cave. The first tutorial applying simplex noise I found, which did seem fitting, was the procedural cave generation in Godot in 6 minutes from Bitbrains. The cool thing about this tutorial is that it really holds its expectations. With about 50 lines of GD script code and an autotile map, you really get nice looking cave structures like this. Here I'm applying my modified version of the cave generator to the dark caves level. My only additions were those four parameters with which I can control where the cave should be placed in the level. The generation simply requires connecting the generator script to the tile map, dial in the desired parameters and press refresh. One difficulty while using simplex noise to generate levels for a platformer is that not all cave parts are reachable. To avoid possible softlocks, I painted a few paths in the cave system with these donut blocks. Then I manually traversed each path and made some corrections here and there so that in the end the paths marked by donuts can be traversed in both directions. Vice versa, I also fixed the cave parts without donuts so that they cannot be accessed. For the record, this was a work of probably one hour, which I find quite acceptable. As the final step, I crafted some mine-like platforming action to the mounting part and added darkness and some enemies to the caves. Now the player needs to find a hard hat with a light source before embarking into the dark caves. I also managed to make these cool light effects by first adding light to the light source to the player and to some enemies. At next, I added occluders to the old tile map and so we get these nice looking shadows as well. 
At this point, big thank you goes to all of the subscribers. Your support has given me motivation to push forward with the game and with the YouTube channel, so thank you. That's it, I hope you enjoyed this video too and see you soon in the next devlog.